Keep in mind, while following this information, that I am not a doctor, nor am I a licensed practitioner of medicine in any way. I am merely sharing my own knowledge. If you have a persistent problem, you should consult your physician. All the information, suggestions, and techniques herein are, therefore, meant for informational purposes only. The viewer or readers are encouraged to verify for themselves all the information herein before making any decisions based upon the advice in this guide. The author shall not be held liable for any decisions resulting from the usage of this guide. Before making any changes in prescribed health care regimes, consult a licensed practitioner. I'm very excited to present the second edition of the Cure Insomnia video series. This video is going to blow your mind. It's a totally new approach to dealing with your sleep problems and curing insomnia, and it's going to show you all kinds of new skills and techniques you can use right away. I suggest taking notes and going through the video more than once in the future because there's going to be tons of information that's going to take you time to implement. This week's video is about covering all the basics. You'll learn about how to make sleep less important by learning about which behaviors damage sleep, which behaviors cause sleep to happen, and how to deal with the most common problems like getting frustrated, feeling anxiously, or obsessively thinking and worrying. In next week's video, we're going to dig deeper and learn to change deeply rooted emotional beliefs to make sleep less important. Next week, you'll learn how exhaustion takes over life and how to improve your health and energy despite it. This will be very powerful for helping your sleep, but I must warn you, next week's lessons are dependent upon practicing the skills and techniques you'll learn in this video. In week three, our final week, you'll discover virtually everything you can do to improve your sleep. It will be a rapid overview of everything there is, and I'll show you what books and programs give the best training for learning all the techniques, as well as what my DVD has to offer. You're about to discover skills for curing insomnia, eradicating exhaustion, and leading a healthier, more fulfilling life. This video is just an introduction to curing insomnia. Like learning to build a house, you're not going to figure it all out in the first day. If you were learning to build a house, you'd have to learn how it's put together, how to use all the tools, and what order to put things together in. With the help of a really good teacher, you could be putting your first house together within a few weeks, and during the next few months, it would start to serve as a good shelter. Curing insomnia is similar. The concepts you'll learn today are going to show you how to sleep in a way you've never known before. The tools will seem new and confusing. You can learn these ideas today, but your understanding will grow and change as the weeks go by. These ideas are like seeds. Right now they'll be planted, and over the next few weeks they'll grow. At first you won't quite get it right. As you practice, you'll refine the way you do things, and you'll get a lot better at it. The most important things to understand if you want to start sleeping better right away are the secret self-therapeutic method and the problems to opportunities technique. These two things will be essential to practice. And to practice them, you'll need to learn your first cure insomnia skill. The first skill is observing anti-sleep and pro-sleep thoughts. Imagine this. What would it be like if you could go into your mind and toss out all the thoughts that were keeping you awake? and replace them with thoughts that cause deep sleep to happen. How would going to sleep be different? What would it be like if you awoke in the middle of the night? The answer is you'd be like a normal sleeper. You'd lie down and fall asleep within a few minutes and you'd sleep through the night. Your job is to figure out what's going on in your head, to find out what's destroying your sleep, and to figure out the perfect combination of replacing thoughts to put yourself to sleep quickly and deeply every time. Just knowing the thoughts that cause sleep won't be enough. Without removing the problems, it doesn't matter how skilled you are at creating solid sleep. The problems will still be there to fragment your sleep all night long. That's why the first skill is to become an observer of your own thoughts. Learn to be able to label any thought as being helpful or damaging to sleep. It's your most important skill as it serves as the foundation for all the other skills. It will allow you to think in ways that create sleep instead of ways that damage it. Just to make it perfectly clear, step one is to identify the thoughts that prevent or damage sleep. This allows you to catch these thoughts when they occur. The more familiar you are with the problematic thoughts, the easier they will be to catch later. To start building this skill, begin thinking of all your thoughts in terms of this makes sleep more important or this makes sleep less important. For example, if you're trying to fall asleep or put yourself out, it won't work and you'll probably only get frustrated. 
The behavior of trying to fall asleep makes sleep more important. Therefore, you can label that behavior as anti-sleep. Another way to look at it is to think of all your behaviors at night in terms of speeds up brain waves or slows down brain waves. For example, worrying about your kids may not make sleep more important, but it still damages sleep by getting your mind excited. Thoughts like these are best kept out of the bedroom. Anything that damages sleep should be labeled anti-sleep. Anything that helps sleep should be labeled pro-sleep. In theory, if you could replace all your anti-sleep thoughts with pro-sleep thoughts, you'd naturally create slow brain waves all night long and your sleep would be perfect. In the real world, there's usually one or two bigger issues that are creating very powerful anti-sleep thoughts. This involves issues like endless obsessive thinking, anxiety, depression, stress, anger, fear, pain, frustration, feelings of loneliness, and others. If you can find a big problem like this and fix it, your sleep will improve dramatically in very little time. That's the case for many people. Another very common case is that there is no big problems. This usually exists when someone just can't sleep and has no idea why. In these cases, becoming skilled in several pro-sleep activities is more important. In both cases, learning to identify anti-sleep thoughts and replace them with pro-sleep thoughts will help improve sleep. We'll get into what the pro-sleep thoughts are later, but to give you an example of how this works, you can replace the trying to fall asleep behavior with being comfortable and laying still behavior. Can you see the difference there? The idea is very different than you're used to. You're not trying to get comfortable. You're not to struggle, roll around, and attempt to get comfortable. That's anti-sleep. When you're trying to get comfortable, laying down can actually be far less comfortable than standing. Rolling over, flipping the pillow, and changing positions, and etc. can be very aggravating. Instead, it's more about laying still and finding ways to enjoy the stillness. After all, isn't laying down generally more comfortable than standing up? When you stop struggling and just remind yourself laying down is more comfortable than standing, you can observe the comfort that comes with simply laying down. You can relax your legs and body. If you're having difficulty, you can even stand up for a minute and compare the ease of laying versus standing. Being comfortable without trying to get comfortable is pro-sleep. It slows down brain waves. Getting comfortable by rolling around and expecting a certain position to help is anti-sleep. It speeds up brain waves. If you've ever rolled around and found that every position was very uncomfortable, then you know what I'm talking about. Laying still, doing the opposite of what seems right, is your actual way to real comfort. It's kind of like reverse psychology. If I tell you, don't think about pink elephants, what's the first thing that's going to pop into your head? It's the same way with trying to get comfortable. When you try to get comfortable, you feel uncomfortable. When you stop trying to get comfortable and you instead try to lay still something that seems like it would be uncomfortable, it's actually much easier for you to be comfortable. Doing the opposite of what seems right is usually pro-sleep. It's a paradox. You're kept awake because your brain is trying to help you fall asleep. During the day, faster brain waves help you. Things are straightforward and simple. At night, your brain is still doing the same thing except now it works against you. That's why you have to think in terms of opposites. When your brain tries to help, sleep becomes less likely and fragmented. When the brain stops trying to help, sleep becomes more likely and refreshing. Choosing to sleep is anti-sleep. Choosing to be indifferent to sleep, or even just to care a little less, is pro-sleep especially if you can learn to be comfortable and enjoy the time you spend in bed. Learning the difference between pro-sleep and anti-sleep can be really confusing because we're dealing with a lot of opposites, paradoxes, and things that are generally counterintuitive or the opposite of what you would think they should be. So don't worry if this stuff is still confusing. Just go through the entire video and you're going to start understanding bits and pieces. There's two different types of thoughts or brain activity that you need to address directly. The first is behaviors that cause speedy brain waves and make sleep important. The second is beliefs that cause speedy brain waves and make sleep important. Here are some examples. Keep in mind that these are just seeds that will grow on you. 
You can't expect to use these ideas to fall asleep tonight, but you can start building the skill of observing anti-sleep thoughts. Example behaviors. Frustration, worry, or anxiety is anti-sleep, whereas comforting support or gratitude and appreciation is pro-sleep. Example beliefs. Saying, not getting sleep is ruining my life is anti-sleep, whereas saying, I can function better than average even with exhaustion if I make the effort is pro-sleep. Not getting sleep is ruining my life makes sleep essential to being able to do anything, which in turn makes sleep very important. The idea of I can function better than average even with exhaustion if I make the effort empowers you to live better during the day even without sleep, making sleep less important than the alternative. They're just different ways of seeing the same thing. It's not that the anti-sleep belief goes away, it just loses some of its power to create speedy brainwaves all night long. The more you practice, the better your days get automatically and the more your sleep naturally improves. You might be concerned that pro-sleep beliefs and behaviors are irrational or not true. That's just because you have a lot of evidence supporting your anti-sleep beliefs and behaviors. As you learn about supporting evidence for pro-sleep, beliefs and behaviors, you'll start seeing everything differently. Remember, the first step is to start observing anti-sleep thoughts. You have to be familiar with them so you'll be able to recognize them and replace them later. The most powerful way to do this is to write them down. This is daunting to some people because of the negativity associated with many of these thoughts. It's a hard first step but makes a huge difference. Writing them down is very important for several reasons. First, writing anything down inscribes it into your memory. Statistical studies have proven that you are five to 10 times more likely to remember something if you write it down. Second, writing it down expresses and organizes the thought. You can see the details and work with them much more clearly. Next, having an anti-sleep thought written down is a technique for putting it out of your mind and allowing deeper sleep to come. If you have a powerful thought and you write it down, you've just saved the idea. If you don't write it down, the only way to save it is to repeat it until it's burned into your memory. Writing it down allows you to get back to the idea later when it's more appropriate. When the annoying anti-sleep idea comes up throughout the night, you can even point to the paper where you wrote it down and say, I've got the idea saved for later. The best way to write this stuff down is to get a sleep journal. Actually taking the effort to buy a sleep journal is powerful on an unconscious level. Reserve the first 20 pages for behaviors and the second 20 pages for beliefs. Every time you catch a behavior or belief that's making sleep more important, creating speedy brain waves, or otherwise getting you more excited instead of calm, write it down. Some of these will be easy to notice, others you won't notice for weeks. Leave a few lines underneath each anti-sleep behavior or belief for its replacement pro-sleep counterpart. When you find a good way to replace the unhelpful way of thinking with a more helpful one, write down your solution underneath it. Eventually, these pages will become the roots of your personal cure for insomnia. It's very important to do this because these ideas are still new. They're seeds that have just been planted in your mind. As the video series continues and as you examine your own behaviors and beliefs, they will grow and you'll see how they relate to everything. Skill one was observing anti-sleep and pro-sleep thoughts. Now that you have some idea of the difference between anti-sleep and pro-sleep, we're going to look at the two sections that make up skill number one, which are section one is behaviors and section two is beliefs. If learning to sleep were like solving a giant jigsaw puzzle, then changing your beliefs and your behaviors would be the two biggest pieces of the puzzle and they'd fit right in the middle. If you had these pieces put in place for you, it'd make solving the rest of the puzzle much easier because it'd make it clear how the rest of the pieces fit in with them. So skill one, section one, observing behaviors that are killing your sleep. First of all, the way you react reveals your behavior. Just think about feelings or problems you experience at night, like anxiety, endless obsessive thinking, anger, fear, depression, frustration, loneliness, or even just being frustrated with that feeling of being awake. Pretend you're in bed experiencing one of these emotions and notice the way you react. For example, say you're about to go to bed and you're feeling anxious about sleep. 
And then you start to worry about how much sleep you'll get. And that leads to you thinking about all the problems that sleep is causing in your life. And every step of this process is only keeping you more awake. These feelings, emotions, and problems aren't what's actually keeping you awake. The real problem that causes the speedy brain waves is the way you react when they happen. When you fight them, they only get stronger, causing more damage to your sleep. Plus, you're putting way too much effort into stopping these feelings, making you feel even more awake, forming a habit of struggle that you must change if you really want to get rid of insomnia and live a healthy, free life. You've got to stop making the downward spiral stronger this way. The secret to reacting differently to these feelings lies in a crucial concept that you need to become a better sleeper. It's the concept of becoming self-therapeutic. So to start changing your behaviors, we need to look at skill number two, the self-therapy method. This is the basis for all pro-sleep thoughts. Without using this method, pro-sleep thoughts will work against you. Being self-therapeutic is essential because everything and anything can make speedy brain waves if it's done in the wrong spirit. Being self-therapeutic is the roots for using any technique in a spirit that creates slower brain waves. For example, if you're trying to relax, but you're doing it in a judgmental way where you're trying to figure out if you're relaxing right and you're, you're pushing yourself to try harder, then you're not gonna actually slow down your brain at all. You're gonna speed your brain waves up by trying to relax. Or take the opposite. If you're trying to get some work done on a project, but you're doing it in a way where you're being lazy and you're not really into it, then your work could get done a lot slower and less efficiently and your brain waves could actually be slowing down when they should be speeding up and helping you complete the project. The method is simple. When you want to practice slowing down brain waves and working on a skill that will improve your sleep all night long, the first thing you always want to do is get into a therapeutic mood, or in other words, become self-therapeutic. So here's a technique for becoming self-therapeutic. The technique is how to talk to yourself like a therapist. 10,000 years ago, if you felt alone, trapped, or helpless, it most likely meant that you were in physical danger. When you fell asleep, a predator could ambush you without any resistance. It improved your odds of survival if you could stay awake when you felt like predators were around. But your unconscious mind doesn't instinctively understand the word predator. It only understands the feelings of agitation that come when you think there's one around. To fall asleep safely, you had to feel safe and sound, not agitated. Times have changed, but we haven't. So it makes sense that today, if you can start feeling secure and comfortable, you'll fall asleep much faster and more deeply. When you talk to yourself like a therapist, you develop a powerful skill because it works on two levels. On the surface, just talking to yourself like this creates slower brain waves. Deeper down, you're causing anything you use to work much more effectively because your spirit is calm. For example, if you're like most insomniacs and you were to take a pill with a normal judgmental spirit, you would wonder if it's working, worry or think too much, and otherwise counteract the effects of the pill by speeding up your brain waves. But if you took a pill and then cultivated a therapeutic attitude, you would forget about the pill and focus on keeping yourself calm, allowing your brain waves to slow down and the effects of the pill to work its magic. A therapist, by definition, is one trained in methods of treatment and rehabilitation other than the use of drugs or surgery. It's a healer, a listener, a comforter. Someone who accepts your flaws, who understands you can't always be perfect. They use specific techniques, exercises, and treatments to rehabilitate damage or to help their patients overcome defects. To become self-therapeutic, you'll want to approach yourself, little by little, as a listener of your own mind. To be your own friend. Sleep expert Dr. Hogg talks about this methodology in his book, I Want to Sleep, Unlearning Insomnia. He says, Contrary to popular belief, therapy has often little to do with finding answers and even less to do with analyzing unconscious casualty. It has more to do with the relief of finding oneself no longer alone. We need someone to talk to to help let go of our fears. Love is important. Listening to the plea of your sleep-deprived, tired self and saying, I am right here, what can I do for you? Lightens the scariness of being alone as well. And that is something you can do for yourself. Finding something or someone to love almost invariably alleviates insomnia. Feeling abandoned, 
trapped, and alone almost always brings it on. Have you been abandoning yourself? Do you feel trapped? If that's what happened, your sleep problems are a form of loss and grief. What you need to do is stop in your tracks. Turn around and say to yourself, Sorry, I didn't mean to forget all about you and leave you stranded. Do you need help? This skill takes practice. You should commit to using it at least once per night for the next 30 days if you want to develop it properly. This is really important, so here's an exercise that you should do tonight. And for now, just try to figure out how you would do it at night. While doing this, take note of the following. Notice your internal dialogue at night, and more importantly, the tone you use with yourself. Notice what you think about at night, and what to think about instead, and how to make the transition. Be aware of tension in the body, which indicates stress. Take special note of how to comfort and relax yourself. How to be there for yourself, so instead of feeling alone, you spend your nights exploring yourself and thereby have company. Sounds strange, but it works, so give it a chance. If you want to participate, you should pause the video in between the following steps and just fully process them or answer any questions or anything like that. First, pretend like your closest friend or family member is experiencing an insomnia problem exactly like yours, and as they suffer, they ask for your support. What would you say to them? Come up with as many helpful expressions as you can and write them down. Keep them by your bedside. I am here for you and you're doing the best you can are some powerful examples you might want to try. Talk to yourself the way you talk to your friend. Use catch and replace, which we're going to get to, to catch thoughts that include judgment, worry, expectation, etc. and replace them with self-therapeutic thoughts. It's funny how harshly we treat ourselves sometimes, how irrational we can be, how we think there's something wrong with us. If your friend was going through such an aggravating problem, you'd support them with comforting thoughts, not harsh ones. Yet, when you're going through the same problem, you're not there for yourself. It's time to start being a little more friendly to yourself. Changing your reaction is usually the single biggest factor in making restful sleep happen, and unfortunately, most insomniacs have never even heard of this approach. By changing your behaviors and reactions regularly, you'll easily form a habit that literally pulls your mind into a calm, relaxed, sleep-inducing mood that causes deep, refreshing sleep to happen within minutes every time. As a reminder, skill number one is about distinguishing the difference between pro-sleep and anti-sleep. Section one of this skill is to observe behaviors that are killing your sleep and the self-therapeutic method for changing them. By the way, the self-therapeutic method was skill number two. Section number two, which is what we're going to get into right now, is observing beliefs that are killing your sleep. At night, you don't even have to think about it. You are automatically and unconsciously driven to make sleep happen, causing fast brainwave patterns. As long as the belief holds true, the spiral never ends. For example, you probably hold the belief, I cannot function normally with less than four hours of sleep, and it makes life incredibly difficult. This belief makes sleep very important. You need sleep to have a good day, to get work done, to drive a car safely, care for your family, hang out with your friends, and everything else that it robs you of. On the flip side, you can learn to function normally on very little sleep, but as long as you believe that you can't, it'll always hold true. A belief is very powerful because it controls the way you think and act. The good news is, beliefs aren't hard to change. In fact, it's only natural for them to change. Just think about any belief you had as a child. When you became more mature and learned new ways of seeing things, the belief changed too. As a matter of fact, there's a whole field of psychology dedicated to changing beliefs called neuro-linguistic programming. Using this technology, it's fast and easy to change the way you think about sleep, making deep sleep come more easily every night. We're not really going to cover deeper beliefs in this video. That's what we're going to cover next week. But using skill number three, you can start catching some of your more obvious beliefs and making them less important. Skill number three is making any belief or behavior less important by seeing it as an opportunity instead of a problem. Here's how to actually make sleep less important. To begin digging into the roots of your insomnia problem, we need to start out by looking at behaviors before we'll be prepared to get to the deeper beliefs. We'll start out with one simple strategy for changing speedy, important behaviors into slower, unimportant ones that is very powerful if you use it right and will allow you to start improving your sleep tonight. The strategy involves looking at your problems from a different perspective. 
Whenever you have any problem, it's an opportunity to get better at something. Just think about anything you're good at. When you started out, you were a beginner and you had a lot of problems. With these problems came the opportunities to learn more in advance. From athletes to scientists, the people who are considered the best in their field also had to overcome the most problems. You too have overcome seemingly impossible challenges in your life, and you did so by pursuing the opportunities that lay in overcoming the problems. One of these amazing, seemingly impossible challenges that you overcame was how to learn your first language without any prior knowledge just by putting sounds together to form words. Before you learned to speak, you had major problems being understood and getting what you want. The problem of not being understood was an opportunity because without that problem, you would have never wanted to be understood. You would have gone your whole life being spoon-fed, or worse, because you never learned a language allowing you to live a more fulfilling life. Once you learned to speak, you found it much easier to get what you wanted. When you were overwhelmed with the problem of not being understood, you cried and screamed to get what you wanted. It was a very important problem at the time. But once you spoke your first words, you were rewarded with the joy of your parents' attention. In that moment, you weren't focused on the problem of being understood anymore. You were focused on the opportunity of being able to finally communicate. You weren't frustrated. It wasn't important to speak full sentences. You had just spoken your first words, and you were relieved. When you focused on speaking more words, you didn't have to cry and scream anymore. You were focused on learning more words and getting more things you wanted. It was an exciting time. The crucial thing to understand is that whenever you're focused on the opportunity to learn more words in this case, a lot of the frustration went away. It wasn't an impossible problem that you needed to solve, so it became much less important. Can you see how when something's nearly impossible, and you need to make it happen, that would make it very important. Well, when you focus on the problem, you're putting yourself in a nearly impossible situation. You can't be focused on the solution and the problem at the same time. Either you're thinking about the opportunity that lies in solving the problem, or you're thinking about how difficult the problem is. Which one would seem more important? Which one causes faster brain waves, the stress of the problem or the creativity of the solution? Starting today, I want you to start seeing behaviors that cause speedy brain waves as opportunities and not as problems, because just by seeing them as opportunities will naturally result in slower brain waves. A key is to go easy on yourself. It doesn't make any sense to make seeing things as opportunities into yet another problem. Just commit to taking one minute before you go to bed to think about one of your problems and ask yourself, how is this an opportunity to improve? Here's a hint. When it comes to sleep-related problems, one opportunity will always be, I can find a way to create slower brain waves instead of faster ones. I can find a way. The more serious your problems, the better your opportunities are. If you have a problem that makes sleep impossible to get and really speeds up your brain waves, and then you fix it, your brain will be much slower at night and you'll start sleeping better right away. With huge problems come huge opportunities. And you won't just be improving your sleep, you'll be learning a more balanced, calm, and powerful way to handle problems that most people never learn to deal with properly. To get you started, let's look at two behaviors that make sleep more important, anxiety and worry. Also, any other frustrating, restless feelings can fit in their place. Even if you don't consider these to be your main problems, pay close attention because you need to see how behaviors can be turned on their head to make sleep less important. It'll be a lot easier to make your beliefs less important if you can learn how to make your behaviors less important. Anxiety is easy to see as an opportunity and one of the most simple ways to completely change a huge problem into a massively helpful solution. The reason why is because when you feel anxiety, you come alive. Whether you're tearing at yourself and being negative or you're preparing for something nerve-wracking, your mind gets very active. You can flip it on its head. You can look at anxiety as problem-solving energy that needs to be focused, disciplined, and used proactively to improve your sleep. Instead of thinking, I can't sleep because I'm so wired up inside, or go away anxiety, I need to sleep, you can catch yourself, stop fighting it, and instead put it to good use. Anxiety at night is best used to empower yourself when you're too tired to practice sleep techniques. When you're exhausted, anxiety gives you the energy you need to work on improving your ability to control your own mind. In this way, you can use the energy anxiety gives you to get better at controlling anxiety itself. And if you're not ready to control your anxiety yet, after all, I haven't taught any techniques for controlling anxiety, 
You can use anxiety to work on seeing other problems as opportunities or getting more skilled at a certain technique or even to get important work done for your life, career, business, or school. Anxiety is just misused energy. If you see anxiety as an opportunity to grow, you can hone your techniques and skills. If you see it as a problem, it only frustrates you and keep you awake. Either way, the energy exists and it's not going to go away until you do something with it. If you use it to practice a technique for calming yourself, it generally goes away faster than if you use it to worry about sleep. Which brings us to worry. This is another example of turning an important problem into an opportunity for slowing the mind. Worry itself is the kind of thinking that allows you to solve problems. Just like anxiety, with worrying, you enter a heightened state of mind. The only reason it's hard to solve problems when you're worrying is that there's often too much emotional turmoil for objective rationality to take hold. Like a wild horse, it has to be tamed before you can use it. The problem is, worry tends to be an endless cycle of seeing other problems in your life, which only speeds up the brain and keeps you awake. However, if you catch yourself worrying, you can use the heightened state of mind you're in to come up with a solution for slowing down your brain waves. Like anxiety, you can use the awakened state of mind it gives you to practice skills and techniques or solve other problems in your life. The attentiveness to details that comes with overly worrying about things can be used to see new ways of doing things that were previously too difficult or confusing. It can also be used as a way to motivate yourself because when you're worried, you want to take care of things. It's not hard to think of different approaches to solving previously difficult issues when you've been thinking that hard. Some people would even say that worrying makes you smarter. Just like anxiety, if you see worry as a problem and say, man, I'm never going to get to sleep if I don't stop thinking so much, it'll only lead to more worrying and faster brain waves. You'll start thinking, I'm not able to stop myself from thinking. You'll go through all your life's problems. It's a never ending cycle. If you see it as an opportunity, you can stop the endless cycle by putting the awakened state of mind to good use. It'll make it naturally much easier to control, discipline, and train. It just takes commitment and practice. As a problem, it keeps you awake. As an opportunity, worrying can motivate you to overcome your own worrying. Either way, it's going to happen, and you shouldn't just lay in bed hoping it's going to go away. Something you could start working on tonight is the bigger picture technique. It helps you control your behaviors by reacting to them in a way that helps sleep instead of hurting it. Write this down and keep it next to your bedside. Whenever you find yourself lost, it'll help you gain control and see the bigger picture. First, you want to catch yourself feeling anxiety, worry, or another form of restless energy. Then you want to identify the feeling as just an energy instead of a problem. Shut down your old reaction. Ask yourself to hold on for a minute. You have to stop whatever you were thinking about or you won't have room for a new idea. Once you've shut down your old reaction and you've got your mind to quiet and hold on for a second, look for an opportunity to use this in a way that's proactive, even if it's just for a minute. Now don't try to go to sleep, just try to slow down your mind. You need to build the skill of creating slower brain waves before you can try to go to sleep. One opportunity you can always work on is to become more self-therapeutic. It would be great if you could start seeing anxiety and worry as opportunities and not problems. But more importantly, I want you to notice how they can be made as less important when they take the form of an opportunity and not a problem. I want you just to notice how you can make things less important. For most people, these problems would become endless loops that run all night long, continuously making sleep harder to get and less fulfilling. But if you can spend even five minutes seeing them as opportunities instead of a problem, you'll see that all that worrying and anxiety doesn't even matter. It feels good to use these behaviors in a way that helps sleep, and you'll notice the tired feelings that emerge once you've slowed down your brain. It'll make you wonder, why was I worrying so much if it wasn't helping? It will take time and effort to get skilled at changing the way you react to these behaviors, but it'll be rewarding time that you're glad you spent. Opportunity is just one way of changing your reactions to make behaviors less important. We'll get into others and some step-by-step -step scientifically proven methods later, but for now, just notice that it's not that difficult to turn impossibly important brainwave speeding situations into useful, less important brain slowing situations. When you're lost in the woods, you'll never figure out where to go, but add just the right information, like a compass, and a nearly impossible task becomes much easier. 
Each one of your beliefs and behaviors that are preventing and damaging your sleep need their own solution. Every time you find one, your sleep will improve. Whatever damage the issue is causing will go away. Slow your brain down one belief and behavior at a time and soon sleep will be much easier to get and more fulfilling. The first skill is to observe the difference between pro-sleep and anti-sleep behaviors and beliefs. The second skill is to create pro-sleep behaviors by using the self-therapeutic method. The third skill was making any belief or behavior less important by seeing it as an opportunity instead of a problem. Now we're going to look at the final skill for this video that you should begin working on. And skill number four is practice pro-sleep behaviors and beliefs. So we're finally going to look at a handful of pro-sleep behaviors. And remember this clearly. Do not use any pro-sleep techniques to put yourself to sleep. Sleep is not a choice. I can usually put myself to sleep within five minutes after years of practicing these techniques, but I still can't make it happen. It has to happen on its own. It always takes longer when I try to fall asleep. Instead, your ultimate goal should be to become skilled at using the techniques. Do not measure whether or not you're falling asleep faster or deeper. Measure how many thoughts you're replacing, how good you're getting at slowing down brain waves, etc. The first technique we talked about earlier is learning to enjoy laying still. It's finding comfort in the way your bed feels without trying to get comfortable. Whenever you catch yourself struggling to get comfortable, get out of bed, stand up, and stop for a second to pay attention to the way standing feels. Then lay down and compare what it feels like to be laying instead of standing. Notice what feels more comfortable about it. Lay still and keep focusing on the comfort of laying down. When you start trying to get comfortable again, find the comfort in laying still. You may have to repeat the whole process as much as is necessary. Second technique, comfort yourself with the self-therapy method. Discuss in your head ideas why everything's going to be okay. Practice being there for yourself. Discover what your happy thoughts are and review the method to come up with other ways to feel safe, secure, and not so alone. Technique number three, practice two of the most powerful pro-sleep behaviors, gratitude and appreciation. These two concepts are incredibly important, so make sure you write them down and review them a few times per week. If you do nothing else, do these because they'll make anything you do more effective and they relieve stress, which will help you sleep. Gratitude and appreciation are kind of the same thing, but there's a little bit of a difference. To give you an example of gratitude, this is something that successful businessman Dan Sullivan does. He said, I got on a plane, I sat down, I got something to drink, and we're getting ready to take off, and all of a sudden the pilot comes on and says, we're going to be delayed 60 minutes. Sorry, we're just going to have to sit here and wait. And what happens? Of course, everyone goes, oh dang it, I hate this. Everyone's really upset. But what Dan Sullivan does is he goes, you know what, look at this incredible miracle. I'm so fortunate to be alive in this little sliver of time in the human evolution. When we have this plane that I can get on and fly across the country in five hours, something that used to take months or years to do just up until recently. And I've got modern convenience. I've got a bathroom if I need it, all these great drinks. I've got people to talk to. And he just kind of goes on and on. The point is he goes right to gratitude. He looks for things he can have gratitude towards all around him all the time. Gratitude sort of isolates you and protects you in the respect that prevents negative thinking in your mind. It's very powerful for being happy, being positive, slowing down brain waves, creating the safe, secure, self-therapeutic environment, and just a lot of really good stuff. And then there's appreciation, which is expressing the feelings of gratitude. When you're having a hard time, just appreciate your bed, find things comforting. Just be thankful for what you have. If you just appreciate the night and you appreciate your life, it will change your sleep. If you want to go advanced with this technique, when you're having a problem, see it as an opportunity to seek appreciation. Find something good about the problem that you can appreciate. For example, with anxiety, appreciate your mind's ability to supply you with energy. For depression, appreciate that you care about yourself. For frustration, appreciate your willingness to even try. This technique is very powerful, but like a seed, it has to grow. The fourth technique is the easiest way to have the most powerful control over slowing your brain waves. This comes from Dr. Hogg's book, I Want to Sleep, Unlearning Insomnia. 
It's a breathing technique. Do the following sequence at least 8 to 16 times, although the longer you use it, the more effective it becomes. Breathe out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Breathe in 1, 2. You can breathe in 4 seconds if it helps you, but the idea is the longer you spend breathing out and the shorter you spend breathing in, the more it will slow your brain waves down. For technique number five, just try other very comforting, relaxing, awesome things, such as brainwave entrainment programs like sleep tracks, deep relaxation audios, muscle relaxation techniques. You can even watch television programs or videos you like, but are dull or calming and will put you to sleep, like watching the Nature Channel. But you should know that the light that the TV puts out is actually damaging to sleep. And you can try other things. If you want to slow down your brain waves, another great thing you can do is read a book. Remember, the goal isn't to put yourself to sleep. It's just to get skilled at slowing down brain waves. You want to replace any of the fast brain wave behaviors with slow brain wave behaviors. And if you could replace all of them, it would naturally improve your sleep. As a quick exercise and relaxation, try clenching your fists and squeezing really hard. Now do the same thing for your arms and shoulders. Clench really hard for a minute, really squeeze, and then let them go. That's what relaxed muscles should feel like. This technique makes it obvious, but you need to start becoming aware of what tension feels like if you're gonna be able to recognize it and then replace it with comfort. A helpful tool for using these pro-sleep behaviors. Rate yourself on a scale from one to 10, 10 being very upset or distressed, and one being pretty relaxed. After using a technique, Reassess yourself. This will help you find the most helpful techniques for slowing down your brain waves and getting better sleep. These are just starting pro sleep behaviors you can use. Remember not to use any of them to try to fall asleep. They are to be practiced as skills for improving sleep, not as techniques expected to put you to sleep. And doing them with a self-therapeutic spirit is absolutely essential. In the coming weeks, you're going to learn more about how to shut off obsessive thinking, anxiety, worry, and similar thoughts with pro-sleep thoughts using a technique called catch and replace. You're also going to see examples of real insomniacs using these techniques to improve their own sleep. For you to use these more advanced techniques next week, make sure to practice the techniques you're learning now. They say 95% of learning comes from doing. You can read something and understand everything about it intellectually and only have 5% of the full knowledge to be gained. The real learning comes from practicing, from witnessing for yourself how overwhelming serious behaviors can turn into calm, sleep-inducing, less important ones. If you don't practice, next week's material won't make very much sense. You won't be able to stop the downward spiral. It's like building a house. If you don't learn how to use a hammer first, you're not going to be able to nail wooden planks together to make a wall later. Now let's look at beliefs. This week, the only belief you should work on is the one that says, I can't. Make the belief, I can't get sleep, less important by replacing it with, I can get skills that will improve sleep. At night, realize you can work on those skills. Start enjoying your night more by practicing different things at your own pace. These techniques give you alternatives to struggling. Struggling will just keep you awake and turn your night into a nightmare. Becoming self-therapeutic is to become your own best friend. You can start exploring your sleep problems and finding solutions. When you start to do that, your nights will become more enjoyable. Instead of trying to sleep and not being able to, you get some alternative activities to spend your time on. Don't look at these activities as something that traps you. Instead, look at them as things that free you from boredom and endless struggle. When you're feeling bored, give yourself something interesting to do. And remember, sleep is not a choice. It's not about falling asleep faster or sleeping more deeply. It's about working on the skills that will get you there. We've only just begun to build your skills. There's much to learn, and most of it involves adding to the skills you learned in this video. It's not rational to expect yourself to start falling asleep faster or deeper until you spend a few weeks building your skills. Here's a final recommendation. Print or write down all the techniques from this video and keep them by your bedside. When you're struggling to get sleep, the techniques will be nearby so you can review them and practice honing your skills. You can find all the techniques in the text below this video. See you next time, James Cahoon.